Hello, and welcome to Bold Women Lawyers Spotlight Interview. We have a great guest with us today. I'm so excited to introduce you to attorney Elsa W. Smith. She's amazing, as you will hear, but let me tell you a little bit about her before we get started. She is the founder and principal of the law offices of Elsa W. Smith. She focuses on wills and estate planning. She counsels individuals, family, and families, and business owners in the creation of wills, trusts, power, powers of attorney, and advanced directives. Now, you wouldn't believe it looking at her, but she has over 20 years experience as an attorney. She is a native Spanish speaker. She is of Afro-Cuban descent. She is a proud minority and woman-owned business owner. Elsa also, and she has so much spare time. She also hosts a weekly educational live show called Women Winning Wednesdays with attorney Elsa W. Smith. You can find that on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And her passion, which is what I really love about talking to her today, is empowering women through estate planning. So Elsa, welcome. I'm really happy to have you here today. Sharon, thank you so much for uh, asking me to be a guest on your show, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, now you and I actually met online at an online networking platform. And, and as I said, what really caught my attention when you introduced yourself and you talked about empowering women through estate planning, and that totally caught my attention for two reasons. One, I thought that's a powerful message to send to women. And then as a, on the business side, I thought, ooh, and that's a great marketing message. So I really wanted to have you come on so we can talk more about what you're doing in the uh, trust and estate world um, and how you came uh, you know, through your journey to get to this point. Because I know you didn't take a straight line from law school to your, your trust and estate planning practice. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, um, <laughs> it was a long one, and I guess if you had to plot it on a chart, you know, be, you have all these zigzags <laughs> going up and down. Um, so, just to give a quick background, um, I went to the University of uh, Mar to use for Maryland University of Miami <laughs> Law School in Coral Gables, Florida. I went to undergrad uh, as a business school student. Went straight into law school. After law school, um, I remained in South Florida and did um, a number of things. Uh, I was I did a lot of uh, criminal work, criminal appellate work. Um, I also did a stint with a construction litigation firm. Um, so I did a number of things, really trying to find my way, trying to find. Um, and for me, looking back, it was more like, okay, what do I don't want to do? You know, and I was Xing that out. I'm like, okay, that's not a good fit. You know, I did um, insurance defense for a while, and that wasn't a good fit um, for for a number of reasons. But a lot of it, you know, it's it was me discovering really who I am and the lawyer that I wanted to become. And in that particular experience, it taught me that I need to be connected to the people I'm serving. I can't represent um at least it doesn't feel good to me this is my experience it doesn't feel good to me if i'm not sitting across the table or even on a virtual platform talking with my clients understanding their needs their wants their hopes their aspirations that's important to me so you know that was again you know part of the discovery so um, I also served um, in the Broward County Support Enforcement Division. It was getting people to pay their child support. Wow. This was, yeah, this was back when um, that the office is no longer in existence, but in Broward County in Florida, um, there was such an office before it all became part of the, of the state. But I did that for a while too. Um, and, you know, fast forward. So how did I come to Maryland? Well, you know, it, it's rather a romantic reason. You know, I did it for love. I met my husband um, while on vacation uh, in Maryland um, after, 
I guess almost two years of being uh, in the support enforcement uh, division of that Broward office and things aligned. And I, I said yes and decided to just uproot myself. And I don't want to blow past that because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I created so a, a network in Florida. You know, I was, uh, you know, the head of a, a very prominent minority bar association, mm -hmm. you know, at a time in Palm Beach County um, and a number of things. And I developed just wonderful relations. So I said to myself, OK, I'm going to uproot. Don't you love emotion sensors? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I and, love that. You know, stuff happens. You can't control it. So, OK. <laughs> That's fine. That's what I love about Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love about going live. It's that you just got to roll with it. Hey, you roll so, with it. And, right. and that has been, it's funny enough that I, I mentioned that that's kind of been my life. I've had to pivot. I've got to, I've got to roll with it and not let anything phase me. So going back to my journey, I uprooted, moved to Maryland. Um, and then I started, uh, I waved into DC. Because um, I practice, you know, so many years, I, I was able to do that. So I started doing um, uh, contract work, e-discovery work in uh, the District of Columbia, and I was privileged enough to work for some really amazing, like really, you know, white shoe law mm -hmm. firms uh, on K Street, and um, you know, it definitely it, it paid the bills. Um, beefed up my retirement savings, uh, which was great, and which really helped particularly um, as we all weathered, you know, 2008, you yeah. know, and all yeah. of that. And when everybody yeah. was like cringing and not looking at savings accounts and all that and lawyers left and right were losing their jobs. Um, you know, I was blessed to weather that storm. Um, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I happened to be working um, on a number of matters, but but uh, one in particular that like carried me through 2008 um, was for a prominent firm in DC, and um, you know dealing with big pharma issues. And mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. So mm -hmm. that you know, but then it got to the point where I said, okay, it's paying the bills, every you know, and and that's great, but there was still a part of me that wasn't satisfied. And it was that need to not only be actively involved in the legal community, mm -hmm. but also serving. Yeah. Ever since, really, ever since I, I, I was a child, I always had this like heart of service. Um, and that's what I saw modeled by the people around me. Um, so I'm like, I need, I need to get back to that because that part of Elsa is not being satisfied. Um, Again, I didn't, I hardly knew anyone. I was recreating myself, um, much like, um, you know, and you mentioned earlier uh, on in my intro that I'm Afro Cuban. I'll just insert the fact that my parents fled Cuba's communism when Castro came to power. So they came to the States having to recreate themselves, mm -hmm. barely knowing the language. So that whole recreation and starting again, that's in my DNA. 